Hi everyone, um, welcome to our open evening on uh, for the health and social care and childcare department. And we're going to talk to you this evening about some of the courses and opportunities available within the department. Um, Langley College, we offer a wide range of opportunities for you. A lot of your learning that you will do within both childcare and health and social care is hands on active learning. We look at uh, the practical elements that you have to do. Uh, in the industries that you could be looking to work in, in the future, um, as well as practical resources that you might make that you will use when you're going into placements. All the staff that uh, will be teaching you have the industry recognised qualifications and will help you gain those qualifications yourself so you can then move on to employment or further education. We have some state-of-the-art facilities here, which we'll go into a little bit more detail um, later on. And we also have some great links with the local employers out there, especially for those learners that are looking to go on to level two and level three, because you will be going into placement. Um, and that work experience is then embedded into your day-to-day -day learning here at the college as well. So we try and make a really good link between your theory and your practice. So what you're reading about exploring in college uh, will make sense when you go out into placement. We have a st uh, student support here, which will um, help you to get around, getting into college, accessing resources whilst in college. And really, if you need any other support in regards to uh, mental health or support with getting your college work completed, um, there are areas that we can forward you on to so that you can access those areas of expertise as well. You can also be part of the student union here. Um, we also have student reps in each class. We normally have two per class. So if you are keen on being an active member of the college, we can also encourage you to do that as well. In the child care and health and care department we have various um kind of areas that you will go into to experience what it might be like to work in the industry that you are aiming to um work towards so for example we've got um, a hospital environment here i'm just going to invite uh, one of our health and care lecturers in to talk about the sorts of things that you will do in our hospital environment. Hi Claire, thank you. So yeah, often we will um, take the students into the simulation bay where we have a mannequin and it's set up with an ECG monitor and uh, we also have a, a skeleton with all the body organs so we can learn about the different parts of the body and also simulate experiences. So it's a really nice way of picking up those employability skills. So learning how to interact and uh, developing communication, along with applying some of the learning. So when we learn about the different body organs and where they are, we think about the uh, ways that we can use observation skills and uh, develop communication and teamwork in an environment that is more like a work environment. And um, it is a good way of then uh, consolidating learning because we can do some questioning after simulation and think about how, reflecting on how we've done something and how we might communicate better. And so it's a really helpful way of developing knowledge in a, a different kind of environment. So that it helps you get used to the work, um, work based learning. Thank you, Joe. And then in the childcare department, we do have what we called our, our play bay. Um, so it's an area which is set up to look like a nursery. And it's in that area where you can get hands on using all the arts and crafts activities, prepare resources ready for you to take out into the nurseries or the schools where you may well be undertaking your placement. It's also an opportunity to learn crucial skills like um, doing displays, um, and also recreating some of those activities you would do with children to kind of get an understanding of the learning and the development that will take place by you actually having a go. So things like junk modelling, uh, making your own paintbrushes, to setting up a role play area um, 
and kind of discussing the sort of levels of development that will be um, accessed of children dressing up, um, preparing um, food using sort of the plastic play food and things like that. And we also have access to all the general day-to-day -day activities that children will have in nurseries, such as the sand play, water play, and all those sorts of things. Um, all of our tutors in the childcare and health and social care team uh, have our industry experience. So we've all been working in those environments um, so we can all share those experiences and our knowledge with you alongside some inspirational guest speakers that we have had in. We've had people in from um, local hospices to come and talk about the work that they do. We've had dietitians coming in to speak to them. We have people to come and talk to them about mental health. Um, so we, we invite those in where it's relevant to your work and they will do activities and presentations and in some cases get you involved in some fundraising within the college to help support things like the local hospice in the area. So I think this year we raised uh, nearly a thousand pounds over the last year for the Alexander Divine Trust, which is a children's hospice in the Berkshire area. All of the classrooms um, are bright, they're modern. Um, we have areas for you to display your work that you've produced in class. Um, and there's also an opportunity for you to use uh, on the our corridor, there's lockers that you can use to keep your study books and anything safe whilst you're traveling to and from your classes each day. There's the library, which has all the relevant study books for your areas, which if you um, are unable to purchase them, you can go and borrow those from the library. And there's also computers there if you want to access some private study. I'm just going to talk through some of the childcare opportunities that we have at the college, and then um, I will bring health and social care in to uh, talk about theirs. Childcare is at three separate levels at the moment for full time. Um, it's level one, um, level two and level three. Our level one course is about hands on experience and learning the building blocks of what it is like to working for working with children. So we cover all the areas such as keeping children safe. We talk about healthy eating. We talk about equality and diversity. So you've got that ground knowledge to build up on to be able to go to level two. At level one, currently our students don't go into placement. But for those students in past years prior to lockdown, if they were showing potential for level two, um, towards the end of the year, um, if we can get the right um, checks put in place, they were able to go out for one or two days into local nurseries just to see if that's what they want to do and if that's where they want to progress for level two. Level one is a year program and to get onto level one, you're looking at a minimum of twos in English and maths. We offer level two programs. Both of these offer um, two different routes into childcare. The level two supporting teaching and learning in schools is about working with children in schools. So you're looking at a aim of becoming um, a teaching assistant in a school where you're supporting children, maybe that have particular needs or just a general in-class support. And then we also offer the level two introduction um, to early years education and care, which is for those people that are looking at working in nurseries in early years so we're, we're looking at children under the age of five so if you're looking at working with older children you're going to want to look at the teaching and learning if you're looking at younger children under the age of five it would be the early years that is also a year's course um, there are no exams for our level two courses at present um, the main way that we would uh, help you to gain your qualification are via two ways uh, first of all, it's with the teaching that happens in class. Each week you'll be set a, a number of tasks that you will then independently write up, hand in to myself, whoever else is teaching you. Um, we mark that work, that work goes in your portfolio, we sign it off. The second part is your placement experience. As part of level two, you will be going into a placement. So depending on what level two course you're on, that would either be a school or a nursery, and you will go there for an average one day a week. So you're given a period of time where you're able to settle into your placement and then 
one of our assessors would introduce themselves to you and they will make a time where they will come out and see you in placement. They will give you prior warning to this, so it's not going to be they're just going to turn up. They'll talk to you beforehand about a plan of what they're wanting to see you do. Um, so you've got time to plan and prepare for those assessments. So, for example, at level two early years, they may well ask you to plan an activity that covers maths and English and science. So you would have to then design an activity that would cover those three areas. So, for example, you may design um, a bubble painting activity where it encourages language because you're talking about the shapes of the bubbles. You you cover in science about how do the, how do the bubbles form, and then in maths it may be they might have to mix the paints and they might have to measure how much liquid they need. Um, and your assessor will just be sitting back and watching you doing this with the children. And those observations and those assessments then go into your folder. And that is how you gain your qualification. At level twos, it's not graded. Um, so it's a pass or you don't complete. All of our students that attend college and attend placement get through their level two um, with the support of myself um, and other teachers, your assessors. Uh, we have brilliant um, personal tutors here that also help you as well as your mentors in your placement. We then offer two level three childcare courses. One of them isn't on the screen, I've just noticed, but we do offer the level three childcare and education. That's a, a progression from your level two early years. That level three qualification is for two years um, and it is graded from D to A star. That will give you your qualification to be able to go and work within the early years sector. To be able to work in early years, you need to have at least a level three qualification. Um, it is government guidance. It's what they are looking for. So you would need to have that to, to get a full qualification and be paid as a qualified member of staff. You'd need to have your level three as well as a GCSE in maths and English. So that's how the level two can help you progress to that. Because if you don't have the GCSEs in maths and English, you can do that as part of your um, early years program to ensure you can get onto level three. It is a two year program. Uh, there are two exams involved, one in the first year and one in the second year. They, these are essay based. So it's not like a GCSE exam where you're having to remember a number of facts and years. It's a timed essay, which is then sent off and marked. The other level three program we offer currently as well is the level three supporting teaching and learning. So that obviously uh, moves on from the level two course. That level three program is only a year. Um, and it's again, it's not graded um, and there are no exams. It's a qualification to be able to uh, go into schools as a higher level teaching assistant. Both of those qualifications could lead you onto higher education. Um, with the level three childcare and education, you could actually go to full time uni with the level two supporting and teaching and learning. You could actually access the higher education system here where we offer a foundation degree, which can then lead on to teaching. Um, but you can also go in, go straight out into work, either in nurseries um, or in schools. I'm going to pass you over to Jo now and she will talk you through the health and social care courses. Thank you, Claire. Yeah, so in health and social care, very similar to the childcare courses, we have levels one, two and three. Um, and these are for the school leavers. And then for our adult learners, we have the access to HE. So we offer social sciences and education, nursing and healthcare professions and the social work and mental health professions. And so there is also a level two course for adults. Um, so if they don't have the entry requirements, perhaps for the access course, there is a way in, um, which is our level two certificate in skills for working in health and social care. So I'll start with the health and social care courses that are for the younger learners. So those leaving school, the health and social care courses, as I say, at level one, two and three. So our level one course is a, a basic grounding of the core knowledge required for working in care and obviously leads on to the level two, um, which then is more likely to gain new employment, um, but can also then lead on to the level three. So it's a progressive um, set of courses. So 
level one, we'd be looking for individuals to have uh, three GCSEs, grade two or above. Um, level two, we'd be looking for your entry requirements of four GCSEs, grade three, uh, including maths and English. And on the level two course, you'd be doing some placement. So about 40 hours placement is required to achieve the course. Uh, level three, um, we are asking for five GCSEs, including the maths, English and science, uh, grade four, and you are required to do 100 hours in placement. So, and that's the two year course. So we start with the foundation um, diploma and in the first year, if they're if the individuals are doing well on the course, you'll progress on to the second year of the course where you'll get the extended diploma. And this is equivalent to the three A levels. So it's the level three course that then can get you into university. And our students progress to a wide range of careers. So that could be nursing, uh, sociology, physiotherapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy, or you might do a degree in health and social care. So there's lots of different career options. And if you think of all the careers that are available within the NHS, most of these would then be open uh, to you and you'd have to then choose the correct um, pathway for you. So there's lots of different pathways. There's associate nurses um, now. So you might want to go and work in healthcare and get further experience and apply to do your nursing later on. Or you might want to go direct to university perhaps and uh, go into a nursing degree. So there's many different pathways, so many different jobs available for the, uh, through um, healthcare, also the private sector. And certainly lots of our placements are within a whole range of different sectors. So you'll get a chance to get experience in places like day centres and care homes uh, predominantly. But sometimes we do get uh, placements in hospitals as well. Um, so it really depends on your interests as a learner. And we try to tailor the course to the cohort. So looking at the individuals who apply to the course, we try and tailor the units that you study. With the level three course, there are mandatory units. So some of those units you have to complete and some of those are externally examined. Um, but the predominant way of assessing these courses are assignment based. So you have to be ready to do academic writing and we're here to help you with that. So we're very supportive and we have high expectations of our students in health and social care and they can aspire to be the best. And um, certainly we have high high standards in our teaching and we provide excellent levels of feedback to enable you to develop and do really well and progress where you want to go. And in the same way, our access uh, to HE courses are set up in such a way that enables you to progress well. So if you're interested as an adult in going into social sciences, social work or uh, social work and mental health, or nursing and the other allied healthcare professions, then that's the course for you. And we like you to have, um, as an adult entering the access courses, we like you to have maths and English. We will sometimes um, on an individual basis take, take uh, some students if uh, they don't have their maths, but they do have English because these access courses are very demanding. And we certainly help you, as I say, to develop your academic ability and academic writing to enable you to progress. And like Claire said earlier, there's lots of support elsewhere in the college as well as your individual tutors. Um, so we can help you with any individual needs. Um, so yeah, a, a really good set of courses um, that help you progress and uh, our students are highly regarded particularly um, moving on from access to universities we've had um, students go to some of the top universities so we have um, high ranking universities like King's College Manchester and Southampton um, and our students are, are doing really well and we often hear back from them um, when they're progressing and finally gaining their qualification um, in their profession and so we might get those back as guest speakers like Claire was saying we often have uh, guest speakers come in and some of those will be um, students who have worked their way up from level one um, into uh, level two and then three and progressed into a healthcare profession. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to go back because what I don't think I covered was the entry requirements for the level two and the level three childcare. So for level two, we are looking at threes in um, maths and English and similar to health and social care for your level three, we are looking at five GCSEs grade four above in both 
uh, English and maths, especially if you're looking at going into teaching, we'd also be looking at the science as well, because you will need to uh, have that if you're going to go on to university. Um, you will also do placement at level two and level three, which I think I forgot to mention. And again, you'll be assessed in the, in the same way um, with an assessor coming out. Um, with level threes, it's at a higher level of assessment because you're gonna be, they're gonna be looking at you observing children and reflecting on those activities um, and how it's gonna impact on them in the future and for their development. So those are the range of courses that we offer um, within the department. As part of your study programme, there are various things that are included. So it's not just you choosing childcare or health and social care, which is your main qualification. Um, for some of you that maybe don't have the right entry requirements for your English and the maths, your study programme will then um, involve you to uh, be able to retake those at the right level for you. Um, so if you have struggled with English and maths in the past, you may not necessarily have to go straight onto a GCSE. Um, we can look at other levels within the functional skills area um, to slowly build you up um, towards that aim of gaining the GCSE. You've also got core studies, which is with your personal tutor, um, and you will see them once a week. They will do um, general workshops with you um, about your personal safety, um, things that are going on within society. So there'll be a lot of stuff on lockdown and, and mental health and those sorts of things. Um, but also you have holistic reviews with them every term and that's your opportunity to sit with your personal tutor, uh, which is not one of your main teachers, um, to talk about how you think you're progressing, how you're working towards your main career goals and what you need to do to be able to improve those chances of, of you achieving um, what you're aiming to do. And again, as we touched on it, you will have also have your work placement if you're on a level two or a level three qualification and you have to attend those placements. We've got good placement officers here who try and place you as near to your home as, you poss as they possibly can so that you can limit the amount of travel that you need to do. As we've talked about, we have work experience. Um, so for those students that are on a course that includes that work experience, um, it is essential um, and it will be linked to your chosen profession. So for example, if you're in health and social care, it will be an environment linked to that area of learning. With childcare as well, again, depending on what course you're on, you'll be in a placement which suits the level and the type of childcare profession you want to go into, whether that be um, an early years or um, a school. Um, your work experience will also cover things like trips, uh, guest speakers and any projects that we are encouraging you to participate in. Um, and you'll work very closely to the work placement coordinators um, linked to your area and they will liaise with you prior to your placement to agree that this placement is suitable for you and you can get there. The key thing about work experience is that you will have to have a DBS check. Um, and that's just a check to make sure that you are suitable for working with children, young people or vulnerable adults. That has to be done prior to you starting work experience. Without your DBS check, you cannot start placement. So if health, or social, health and social care or childcare is something you would like to do, my real suggestion is that prior to coming to enrolment, that you make sure that you can have access to all the evidence that you are going to need for your DBS check to go through. So we're looking at things like having an up to date passport, a current bank, bank statement, um, a letter from the council uh, to say that you're living at that house. We need to have evidence that you live where you live and you are who you are. So it could be things as well as like um, professional driving licenses and all of those things. You will not be able to continue the course without that DBS check. So it's really vital that if you don't have those things that you start looking now at how you can get hold of those ready prior for your enrollment so we can put those DBS checks through quite quickly. Um, we work with employers not only with placement, but as we've uh, mentioned before, for guest speakers. Um, 
we work very closely with Slabrow Council and their school nursery. So at the moment, we've got good links to Blue Willow Nursery um, and some of the guest speakers that we've spoken about before, like the Alexander Divine Trust. We've had dietitians, Slough Children's Services have been in to see us. And we also have employment agencies that come in. We have um, careers fairs where you can talk to local employers um, about your chosen career and the opportunities they may be able to provide you. When we send you out to placement, there are key skills that employers want to see, um, especially within the caring industry. You need to have patience because you're working with young children, vulnerable people that need your time and your patience. And when you're working with these um, young people and adults, you need to have a calm demeanor and be able to communicate very clearly to them what you're wanting to do with them, what the activity is, what task you're undertaking with them. They need to understand what their role is and what your role is. And you might also be communicating with other members of staff, um, visitors, parents, other people that, that use that facility, as well as the key people that you're working with, you should be able to communicate with them and be enthusiastic. You need to be going in there with a smile on your face, showing that you're keen to be there and keen to be part of their team. Um, we've had various students in the past that have shown all of these skills and much more um, through their assessments um, and through using their initiative and be able to fully participate as a team member where they've actually gained employment from their placement at the end of their course. So, for example, uh, one of our level three supporting teaching and learning students um, has recently um, completed, well, she completed last July um, and her placement, she had the same placement for level two and level three. And in the middle of her level three program, they offered to employ her on her placement day. So she was then getting paid for her placement days um, and she's now working there full time. And they are now supporting her um, to help her get her teaching degree as well. Um, so if you find the right placement for you and it works well, when you show that you are capable to be part of their team, you may well find employment. Um, and as Paige has put in her case study, um, she found the course enjoyable, um, good support from all of her teachers. And she's made a lot of friends um, that she didn't have before, and she can now continue working towards her career. There's another case study here from somebody that accessed, accessed the HE Social Sciences and Education Programme, uh, where he has completed his course and is hopefully joining Reading University so that he can start his degree in primary education. So we have a lot of success at the college um, and within our courses. There's a lot of support available for you here, not only on your courses from your teachers, but via your personal tutor during your tutorial time. Down in the learning center, you can access some learning support. You can book in for one-to-one -one support uh, with uh, maths and English, and even from general study skills to things like proofreading and being able to reference. There is financial support um, available at the college. Um, depending on your circumstances, you may be entitled to support with your travel, with um, gaining um, some vouchers to be able to um, gain food at lunch times and also to help with any resources like books and other things that you might need to buy for your placement we have uh, a wide range of support here for your well-being and again your personal tutors will play a big part in this because you may contact them when something is affecting you but there are also people within the student services department where you can make an appointment to speak to them and talk about the areas um that you might need extra support with. We have the career zone here in the college where they can give you careers advice. So it may be that you're not sure whether to take level three health and social care, level three childcare, or you might decide that you want to completely change your career path after completing a course. You can go and speak to them and they can give you some advice. And they also run workshops as well within there where you can update your CV. Um, and they can help you with things like writing letters to employers, um, doing job searches and all of that. 
College life, again, it's not just about coming here, sitting in a classroom and doing your work. You've got access to the college gym. You can take part in activities um, across the college throughout the year. So there's freshers fairs. We do charity fundraising days. Um, you may want to set up a club or a society and student services are very keen to hear from people who want to set things up, um, such as it might be a chess club or it might be a particular sports club you want to set up. Um, and they can help you look into that and whether that will be viable to run. There's sports activities that go on throughout um, the year, including um, badminton, football, and all of uh, some other physical, I think there was a rugby team at one point, um, but you can then talk to the sports department or again, student services, and they can advise you of the types of activities that you might want to take place. You may want to be a student ambassador, being part of the student union, um, where you would take on certain roles. For example, um, when we have open days uh, actually in the college, you may be one of the ambassadors that stands up out the front and talking to potential students, um, showing parents around. You may take part in the student conferences um, and speak up for the students around you about what you want to see happen in the college and having a voice yourself. We also have the salon here where you can access beauty treatments, um, you can have hair treatments, um, which you only have to pay a very, very small fee for. And you might even consider being a tutor rep where you take part in those student conferences and talk about what's affecting you and the people within your group um, so that the college can listen to the changes that maybe you want to make uh, within your daily life at college. We do have high expectations here within the department and at Langley College. We do expect um, attendance and punctuality to be very high. We're looking at 100%. Obviously, if, if there are particular circumstances, you do need to talk to your teachers and your personal tutors. Dress code, we ask you just to dress casually. Um, what we don't expect is it, you're not on a fashion show, you're not going to a nightclub. So just remember you are walking around the college um, and you just really need to be comfortable. It may be that when you go out into placement, there is a particular dress code. So for example, for childcare, you will be expected to wear um, plain black trousers, flat black shoes, um, and a plain top. Um, we would not expect you to be going in jogging bottoms and a hoodie, it would not be acceptable. You need to consider your behavior in and out of the classroom. Um, we expect you to be polite and using your manners throughout your time in the college. Um, any disrespectful behaviour obviously is dealt with. Um, but you just need to remember that there are people learning in the classrooms as you're travelling around the college. Your lanyard, which is your ID badge, must be worn at all times. If it isn't around your neck, uh, you will be questioned. And if you don't have it, you must go to reception to get a replacement for the day. Not having your lanyard on does go against the policies and procedures of the school, of the college, sorry. Um, and you could obviously uh, be asked to be leave if you don't have it. Um, we ask you to respect the college and environment. We do have a lot of facilities here and a lot of equipment. And whilst using that, we ask you just to respect it and use it as required. We are trying to develop your employability skills and we're here to help you to get ready to learn and ready to move on to the next stage of your learning. Um, so what we require from you is for you to attend, try your best, do the work, that you've been asked to set. If you're struggling, always, always ask for help. Everybody's here to help you, um, but you need to be prepared as well. So walking into a class, um, you need to have your notebook, your pencil case, any other equipment like calculators if required, any particular study books, or if you've been asked to prepare something for that class. Thank you very much. And we'd like to now ask you if they ask you for any questions. Thank you, Claire. Thank you, Joanne. Um, <clears throat> there's a couple of questions that have come through, actually. Um, when, re when, re when results come out um, or when students get the results, what happens if they don't quite get the grades that they were hoping for? In regards to childcare, um, for the level one and level two courses, there are no grades. You would know for um, those two courses whether you've passed before the end of the year. Um, and we'll be working with you to make sure you've fulfilled all the criteria. In regards to the level three, that's also very similar. Your two exams are taken quite early on in the first and the second year. So you will know the grades before the end of the academic year. Um, 
and in regards to those grades, there are opportunities to uh, retake that those once for the level three um, if you need to get a higher grade. Um, but again, towards the end of the year, once you've got those grades, you will know the outstanding pieces of written work that you will need to complete in order to um, finish at the end of the academic year. Okay, great. I think as well, um, so for example, someone's applied for the level three, they don't get, you know, the, the English and maths or... Okay, well then they're all... Yeah, so they, they will have the option, won't they? To... Yes, they will. So if you've applied, um, we're doing interviews at the moment. Um, so if you've applied for a level three course for either childcare or health and social care, and at the moment your grades are saying, well, we're predicting you fours and fives, um, you would get the offer for the level three. If it comes to enrolment and you maybe have got a three in maths, um, what we would do is automatically offer you the level two place. So whatever you've been offered, if your grades don't match, um, we can always offer you one of the lower level courses. Great, thank you. Um, and what are the normal uh, class sizes? For On these? average, it depends. For childcare, um, it, it averages between 16 and 20. Um, I know uh, health and social care probably slightly bigger um, for some of their courses. Um, but on Yeah, average, probably about, about 20. Yeah, yeah 20, so about 16 20 on average. Great, thank you. Um, a couple other questions. Um, you may have, you may have touched on it a little bit throughout your presentation, but how, how does the college day work? So, for example, if your lessons don't start until 11 o'clock, do students still have to come in at nine like they do for school? Um, could you just explain? No, you, you will get a set timetable um, and you'll only be expected to come in for when your lessons start. Generally, um, so for example, if I give you an example of one of our courses today, so for our level two early years today, they would start at 9.30. Um, they have an hour and a half uh, lesson, which takes them through to 11 o'clock. They have a small break. They have another lesson. Then they have a, a half an hour lunch break. And then they've had their two lessons in the afternoon following. So they finished um, about 4.30 today. But for in some cases, they may finish at 12.30 if they've only got two sessions in the morning. And in some cases, they may not start to 11 o'clock. You only have to come in for when you're timetabled for your lessons. You're not expected to be here from 9.30 to half past four if your lesson doesn't start to 11 o'clock. Great, thank you. Um, only there's one more question um, that's just come through. I'm just trying to find. Um, universities accept and recognise BTECs just as much as A-levels, don't they? I mean, you've got you've given some examples of when students yeah, have gone on to university, but asked, I just know it's a concern. So some. both the level three childcare and the level three health and social care BTEC um, are recognised. They will get the equivalent of their UCAS points, yeah. Great, thank you. Um, just two seconds. So another question has come in now. Um, what, what's the best course um, would you say to someone if they wanted to become a midwife? It's probably it's a health and social care question. I would say that would definitely be health and social care. <laughs> yes, no worries. <laughs> so um, the, the midwifery course, um, if you were doing the level three on BTEC, you could apply uh, to midwifery. Um, if you were doing the access to nursing and um, healthcare professions, that would be the course for an adult on health and social care. Um, and obviously dependent on the individual's entry qualifications. Um, so they might want to do the level two certificate in skills for working in health and social care first, if they're an adult, but they don't have the entry requirements for access. Then once they have maths and English, so they might want to do their maths and English alongside the level two certificate and then go on to do the access course and then apply for midwifery. Um, if they're a younger learner, they might want to do the level three uh, health and social care BTEC and then apply through that, uh, through UCAS from there. Perfect, thank you. Um, we've had a um, questions come in saying, can um, we have a bit more information about the foundation degrees? Um, we are going to have an HE um, session coming up over the next month, but I just don't know if you just want to touch upon yeah, those. Yeah, so the foundation can. degrees are, we um, in the childcare department, it, it, we don't teach those, but we do have really good uh, links to the foundation degree department. Um, some of our um, learners that complete the level three 
teaching and learning don't necessarily want to go to um, university full time and don't want to do an access course to be able to do that. So what they do is they go out to work and the foundation degree almost works on a part time basis. Um, I don't want to go into how many days in case I get it wrong, but I think it's about one or two days where they, they come in and do their their course with the lecturers here but they can also work in their schools at the same time so they're still employed by their schools as a TA or support assistant and they can work towards their teaching degree at the same time and it takes the same amount of time to become a fully qualified teacher uh, either through the foundation degree or for them going through um, to full-time uni so it's still on average about four years to qualify. Perfect. Thank you. Um, I've just posted out into the chat boxes to say we're I think we're coming to the end of our session. Um, so if anyone has any last questions, um, just to add that there is um, another open day um, on the 6th of May, which is, um, you know, you can register on the website. Otherwise, we have a whole series of subject events like this one um, that covers all areas across Langley College. And if you've missed any, um, all the recordings are up on the website as well. Um, I'm just waiting if there's any last questions. Is there anything else, Claire, Joanne? Joanne, you would like to add? Not that I can no. not I can think of right now. All I can say is if you're still unsure, come back to the open evening and, and, and chat to us um, because we may be able to um, at some point um, show you around the classrooms or something if you're unsure or, or, or share some particular, if there's any particular information people want, we can we can share some of that as well. But yeah, just, just talk to us and ask us any questions and we'll be happy to help. Great, thank you. I think that's it then. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Very much. Thank you. Thanks.